There's a plumber in the town where we live. There is. And he's called Robert Shaw. Yeah. After Santa's been delivering all his parcels. So after he's been milking the cows. <laughs> the side of his van, he would have written, I think you're going to need a bigger boiler. <laughs> so that's one of the prizes. I didn't know anyway. that Santa had a field of Guernseys, did you? Oh, shush. He makes delicious ice cream. Not holidays, holidays. No, that sound. <laughs> Other ones make you look like a tramp. I don't think we do. I think that's. <laughs> is he right? Is he right? We have to come At the end later. of question six. We'll do it wherever you like, but it just needs to be, you know. No, just tell me. And do I need a trolley now? Yeah. Or do I need one later? So we'll just get one of those big bags. Yeah, you, you you will not give me the answer. Yes, you will. I've got it. Of course it is. Right. This is the point, you fool, where we cut. Prior to the beginning of filming, <laughs> I drummed into Kay. Welcome, everyone, to episode 112. Woohoo! And what a show we have in store. Because, yes, last time it was a surprise that Nittle Forfeit was oh, back. Yes. And today it's time for round two. And can you believe, I, I can't believe that at the end of today's episode, we will be at the halfway point of this new series of Nittle Forfeit. That's true. The year is flying by. It is November now, isn't it? Oh my goodness. It's gone past bonfire night, thank goodness. It's not my favourite. But yes... Knit or forfeit today, it's my round. But not only that, the winning post is but moments away for Samantha. Oh, yes. And, and do you know what? It's nearly finished. Th this is the point. And I think this is the perfect example of the differences between me. Actually, it'd be lovely to have a show of hands on the people. The people, they're up there. Did you know what I was talking about then? Madagascar. Yes, yeah. look, 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 it's so cool. <laughs> who doesn't know that reference? I mean, everybody's, anybody who's seen the film will know that. Well, exactly, exactly. I do love you the... love the people? <laughs> well, how do you do? <laughs> it's a lovely, a it's a lovely film, we love it. It's very funny. But yes, who gets sad when a big project is about to finish? No, scratch that. Who gets sad when any project is about to finish. Who feels stress about what they're going to do next? I, I'm not putting my hand up. I know you're not. Actually, I know the you don't. only time I felt kind of sad that a project finished was when I was knitting my bits and bobs blanket. Right, right. Because I just loved it. Yeah. I was happy to get it, I was happy to finish it because I was excited to put the pattern out. But I was still a bit sad that it had finished. But yeah, I'd love to know actually. I, I, it would just be interesting to know if it's sort of a fairly even balance or if mm. I'm in the minority or am I in the majority. It, it, certainly from the way that posts appear, you know, on Ravelry, Instagram, wherever it may be that people are posting finished objects, you would think that people enjoy finishing Yeah, I, I'd say so. That I think people, the, the, the overall impression I get is that people are happy to have finished Look, a project. Even if they've enjoyed it, they're happy to have finished it. It's tricky because I do enjoy finishing a project, especially mm -hmm. when it's valued and like, like all of us, you know, that's the great thing, isn't it, about doing what we do. You create something and then, you know, if you then get to see it being enjoyed and worn and all that, you know, that's really good. But that doesn't take away from the fact of the, 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 the I feel an equal amount of stress as to what am I going to do next. Well, you can't be feeling stressed because you've got another jumper on the game. Yeah, and that was how I managed to begin the assuasion of said concern. I know something you could knit. I know something. Do you? The vest that I'm knitting for you, you could knit it. Oh, funny. That's great. Look, you're enjoying it. Look, it do what you like. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I, I'm, I really don't have a problem. I, no, I, I genuinely okay. don't have a problem. Okay. So, uh, it's so, just my usual aversion to garments. But. Well, put it, you know, put it away till the new year then. Well, and I haven't you, worked on it for a couple of weeks, though. So. There's absolutely no point. I, I'm, no. I'm the first one, actually, to... There is zero point in knitting on something for the sake of it. And I don't think I've ever knit on anything. Socks, maybe, to get your, no. the thing finished. No, no uh, I don't know about that. I don't think I ever felt that I had to. 
Right. And do you know what? I I've never feel f- that a lot. But that is all. Well, it's ob- a mental obviously, thing. It's, my, it's all to it's do my with doing. your brain. And it would be interesting to know how many people out there feel a blind. I see. I don't think. Obligation maybe I'm wrong. knitting. I think the majority of people can't stand obligation knitting. That's the. You hear that a lot, don't yeah. you? That you know people are knitting Christmas gifts and they don't really want to do it, but they feel that they should because it's family and it's friends, and they're kind of expecting it because they know you're a knitter. That kind see, of feeling. M- m- my my feeling is, and I could be totally wrong here. So so you know, in the first thing we were talking about, you know, I get stressed when I'm finishing a project. Do you? The second thing we're talking about here is, you know, do you feel obliged to knit stuff and do you not enjoy knitting those things that you feel obliged mm. to knit? You see, I don't think there'll be as many people in that category as you maybe think there oh, are. Oh, right. But, but people only wrong. knit gifts if they really want to. I think it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because we were at a family, the last New Year's family gathering and everybody obviously knows we knit and we knit loads of things as gifts, don't we? But one of the people there had just got a little chihuahua puppy and she was asking me, you know, oh, you could knit a little jumper, you know, as if it wasn't, as if it was... For the dog? Yeah, for the dog. And I kind of laughed it off, but I think she was probably serious and she sort of... I expected it to be something that I could knock out in like five minutes when actually I wouldn't even know where to begin with a project like that. No. Um, so I kind of just laughed it off and pretended she didn't mean it. And, and also, yeah. it's sort of uh, it's, it's segueing into uh, what patterns are available for two hour puppies. Well, there will be. There will yeah. be lots of dog coat pa- sure. patterns out there, but I How don't really know seen? how big it is. How many of you ever seen posted on Instagram? Or I, I don't recall ever seeing anyone saying, no, oh, just will, cast this. No, but there will be patterns out there. But the thing is, I don't know how big of a dog she is now because we saw her when she was a puppy. And, you know, it's, it's a very difficult thing, isn't it, I think, knitting for someone else's dog that you don't see often. Interesting question. Mm. I wonder how many people knit for their dogs. I've seen quite a lot of people knitting dog dog coats dog well, jackets that's so interesting because i've never seen one um, now d- we've made quite a discovery in the last couple of weeks have we yes right. we can tell you now with absolute certainty that there is a way of journeying to another dimension in the world in which we live this is a place where there is no natural light this is a place where everyone walks in one direction. This is a place that when you enter, you will only leave when you've walked round the whole place. Oh no, I know what he's gonna say. <laughs> Welcome to IKEA. <laughs> now, now Oh my goodness. Before we begin, let me tell you, I it's have like every the- respect that say nothing yet. Hold that thought. I have every respect for the furniture and the things you can get from there. In fact, I'll go even further than that. Mm. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. And the last time, and probably the time before that we purchased something from Ikea, we made probably what was the correct decision, and that is ordering online. Mm. But this time, we made the cataclysmic mistake, (laughs) as it turned out, (laughs) of actually going physically. We've not been to Ikea for quite a few years, have we? And we're not going again. So I think we'd forgotten. Hadn't we? And Bryony was really excited to go. She wanted to sit in all the chairs and on all, all the sofas now, and look at all the toys. It's an interesting ride because it starts off with so much positivity. Yeah. You begin and, oh, isn't this fun? There's all things all these set lovely out. lovely little rooms and... Quite quickly, so I lovely. begin to get quite confused, though, because I see things which... I think I'm going to need, but I can't make a decision about that until yeah. I've seen something else. And I think, well, am I going to have to walk all the way back here to look at that? Yeah, and sometimes, because they, they sometimes have a load of something there in like the room setting, but then they'll also have that thing in the sort of market area. But what if I don't see it? And so you, should you I pick it up now? You have your little piece of paper, don't you? And you're writing down the location of things. Yeah. And, and do I need a trolley now? Yeah. Or do I need or, one later? Should or we a just basket? Get one of those or a bag? bags? I don't got... know what to do. I... <laughs> so, so it began so so positively. Chairs were sat in, fun was had, 
and then you continue through deeper into the realms of hell you until really... you get to the midway point and you know that no matter which way you turn it's going to take you some time to get out yeah and i'll be honest i had the first ever panic slash anxiety attack I've ever had in my he did. life. He, he, you didn't do well at all in there, did you? No, and I'd I... just eaten a very healthy lunch um, and I had a massive sugar crash. So clearly, adrenaline must have been yeah, absolutely there some, flowing. There was something going on. I think you were panicking because there's no windows and there's kind of no easy way of getting out. It's, you know that it's going to take you a little while to get out. Whether you turn around and go against the flow... Which really... The, the constant, incessant flow of people. Yeah, or whether you just carry on. Or walking at the it's, same speed. Uh, yeah, you know, it, you know that it's going to take you a while. And I think you just you just panicked, didn't you? I did. And it's a very strange light in there yes. as well. Because of the artificial, everything's artificial light, isn't it? There's no natural daylight. And I think that as well yeah. adds to that sort of oppressive feel. So, so... You know, we, we get to the bit where we wanted to get to, and it was all... Now, now it, like, bear with me, bear like with me. the warehouse bit, do you mean? No, 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 no. But before that, we, we wanted to look at desks. So yeah. we got to the desk bit, and none of them were any good. In fact, I wasn't very impressed with any of them. No. But I really like IKEA, and I like their stuff. So I'm not criticising their stuff at all, because we progress further through. And again, you're seeing things, and you think, do I need that, do I need that? Progress further through, okay, found something perfect the perfect thing and then you think well now i know i do need those things yeah that were back there so we had to go so back i just said look you stay here yeah. brian was like oh, at don't. this stage she she the excitement had waned don't come back with me and she was she got a teddy that she wanted and she would she now wanted out you know i wanted out <laughs> so i went back and i found the things i needed typically i didn't pick up enough of one of the things no. so anyway but that doesn't matter so anyway Found the perfect desk. And then, of course, you get to the storeroom. Yeah. And you've got to find it. Because we wrote, you have to write, write down the aisle yeah. and the number yeah. and what it was, yeah. you know, the code. Yeah. So we've done all that. <laughs> so, yeah, you go into this massive warehouse yeah. and Brian, you just went, oh, I this. <laughs> so then we got a trolley because yeah. we knew we'd need a trolley. And can I just ask? It, it was a desk. Look, I'm a big fella, right? It, it was too wide. Uh, it was it too was, wide apart. But to push it, you need two people or an extremely wide person because I just couldn't do it. It was It's just weird. Mm. But anyway. Anyway, so we, we found it, didn't we? We found it quite quickly. Yes. And it, it was really funny though, wasn't it? Because I said to you, there was something else that we were looking for. And I said, because <laughs> the other thing, I don't know about you when you go, but uh, what happened to us was you start off, everything's nice today. And then you realise that you're not having a particularly good time, so you speed up. Mm. And then by the time you get towards the end, you are physically walking as fast as you can yeah, you just without to, running. I felt that kind of panic <laughs> feeling a lot, you know, where so, you... I said to you, oh, where was that a particular I, thing? And you said, I saw it, but you were moving so fast, I couldn't tell you that no, it was there. You, I just had to keep moving to keep up with you. You were so far ahead of me, and he was literally kind of running through. And I was like, what on earth is going on? I thought he needed these things, and I couldn't, I didn't know Get exactly... Get out of here. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> the long and short of it is, we got exactly what we needed. Yeah. And... It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's actually a, a dining... It's a table. It's a kitchen table that we yeah. ended up buying. Yeah. It, but we were looking for... A, honestly, a, honestly. A desk for Dan's office. We've rearranged it all. It's got a bigger desk that sort I of cannot... fills an entire wall. And it was so um, cheap. It was really inexpensive. It was like £85. And it's well made. It's metal. The legs are all metal. And all it's the better fixings than the old. are metal. What I had, when put together correctly, mm. it's created a really sturdy, superb piece of furniture mm. for not a lot of money. No, it's brilliant. And so it's... I totally get why IKEA works in the way it works. And I don't have an issue with going in, finding the thing and, no. and all of that. The issue I have is the fact that I have to walk through the whole, the whole place. place. But if you want um. to go to another dimension, <laughs> get in your car, go to IKEA. There's one more thing that I need to just raise. What is the deal? With SSKs. I've never liked performing an SSK. And it's the one stitch, and to be honest, I've not said it as often as I have had issues with it. In fact, I would say that pretty much every time I do an SSK, when I'm 
I've Going slipped, to, slipped. Yeah. When I go through, I always pull through the yarn I'm knitting with plus. A bit, you split, split I'm, something. I'm splitting yeah. one of the stitches of SSK, so I have to spend a few moments. I didn't realise that there was another option. There is another option, and I think, you see, back in my mum's day of knitting, I don't know whether they would have ever done an SSK. I don't know that for definite. They more did a slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. I remember seeing that instruction in knitting patterns very, very often because I used to write out knitting patterns for my mum. She had difficulty seeing the small writing on the knitting pattern. So when I was a teenager, I used to spend hours writing out knitting patterns for my mum, line by line, not charts. There were no, there was no charts back then. It was all line by line. Well, I used to do it because, you know, the writing is very small on that, but mum was a nurse and she worked nights. She always worked nights. So you know, the lighting was never very good. So I think that's another reason, you know, she used to knit in her breaks and things. And I just remember writing a lot, PSSO, past slip stitch over. Right. Whereas now, I think that's really fairly universally been replaced by an SSK. In in modern, you know, you will find in an older style knitting pattern, you do still see yeah. slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. It just made me think, because I was working a gusset decrease on a sock, you know, and I was like, oh, do you know, I don't. And I think I've been doing a lace pattern as well, which had SSKs in. Every time I do one, I'm like, oh, a little bit like that, because I just don't really enjoy having to, you know, get your needles into the front like that. So I was at the start of a gusset decrease on a sock, which I'll show you in a bit. And I just thought, well, I'm just going to do, instead of the SSK on, on the other side, I'm going to do slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. And actually, I think it looks neater. It looks way neater. And... It, it just got me thinking as to why do we do SSKs? Why, you know, when, why do we do an SSK? Where, am I missing something? My guess would be it will be a, a modern invention to try and speed up the speed process. Speed up, maybe it is. I, you see, I don't think it's, it's any guess. quicker. I think, personally, I'm quicker. Maybe it's quicker if you knit continental. I don't know, you see, because I don't knit continental. Maybe it's to do with that. Maybe it's a continental thing. Right. I don't know if I've replaced it in a lace pattern yet, but the next time I do a lace pattern where it's got an SSK, I'm going to replace it with that and so just see like... what it looks like. Yeah. I think, to be honest, they look very, very similar. And certainly on the gusset, I think it looks neat. It looks neater. I showed you the two yeah. side by side, and yeah. I think you can clearly see which one looks tidier. People do have issues with, like, laddering right. down the side of... Um, Sarah loves sock wool. I think I think Sarah's spoken about this, and I sort of pulled it apart, and there isn't really much of a ladder there. So I don't know. I don't know whether if you Sarah, if you're watching, if you try replacing your SSKs with slip knit past slip stitch over, whether that might help tighten up that whole thing because you're knitting one of your stitches. You can make sure you, that you knit that quite tightly. You know that might help the whole sort of gap, you know, that, that bit of a ladder that you can get, so. Yeah. Now it's time for us to find out. Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Well, talk. Well, that's my new way of asking it. I like it. Well, it's a pair of socks, seeing as we were talking about gussets. Let's carry on talking about it. This is the opal pair of socks for Dan that I'm knitting. I didn't show it last time. But I've finished a sock. Well, you have now, not. And I've started the second one. And is this the one with the slip one? No. One? Oh. No. But That's, you do have I it. I do have it back there. I'm going to show it. So we can compare. I, we can compare. Oh. Yeah. It's a scientific so experiment. You didn't expect that when you pressed play, did it's you? It's different yarns, so it's not completely scientific, is oh, it? You've blown it. What I really need to do, I, what I really need to do is do two gussets in exactly the same yarn, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. and then we'll be able to, to say for, for certain. This is the lovely opal sock that I'm knitting for Dan, and it's the it's one of the, based on the artist, that artist there. <laughs> yeah, I've stopped saying it all together <coughs> because it just sounds like I'm being yeah. naughty when I say it. And this colour is 2107, and you can still get this range of yarn if you just Google it. There are several stores that still have this, online stores. And I finished the first sock. It's lovely. It is lovely. It's a proper opal sock. It's not been blocked or anything. I'll be honest, um, right? It, it, I go in my sock drawer every day. It's lovely. And there are certain ones that stand out and certain ones that don't stand out. Right. And I think these 
are going to be yeah definitely probably and I was thinking top of the pile I was thinking literally. I might save these for Christmas actually right. for you for a Christmas cookie. present because I don't know whether I'll get a chance to knit another pair yeah, for yeah, you before Christmas it's no, November no. now isn't it yeah. So I think that's what I'll do. But yeah, so I finished one sock and isn't it lovely? So I used Drops Fable for the heels and toe, heel and toe even, there's not two heels in a sock. Just in the cream, I think it is, or white. I don't think it's white, I think it's like off-white or cream. And I think that looks really nice. So just just a plain old sock, but I did really really. That's harsh. I know it is a bit. It's harsh, not a plain really, old sock. I think it when you're knitting with such exciting yarn, yeah. it's not a plain old sock. And it's a, this one's a lovely skein of opal. It's lovely and plump, and it it just it's just so nice to knit with. I always these days now with self striping or self patterning, I do always just still put in a heel flap and a heel turn. But as I said before, what I found is that if you do a square heel. As you can see, there's just one of these lovely square heels. Then you don't have as many gusset stitches to decrease, and therefore it doesn't I find that in quite shocking. interrupt the flow as much. It surprises you, me every time, that. Well, if you just look at the sock, if you compare the section here where the gusset decreases are, so it's this green, pink, orange section, and look again at the green, pink and orange down there, there's really not that much difference in terms of losing part of the striping. I don't think really, you know, I think there might be like a row of green sort of missing and maybe a row of the pink, but really, I just don't think it's noticeable. And I think it would be more noticeable if you had a self striping that had thinner stripes. But if, if you've got something that's got a decent stripe width like this, and I have been working with some hand dyed self striping recently actually, and that one's got I think about eight, eight or nine rows per stripe, and that looks absolutely fine. And I'm finding that I just lose, like I said, maybe one or two rows. So I'm really happy that now, because I, I did have a time where I, I wasn't really using self striping yarn because I didn't, I'm not keen on a short row heel or afterthought heel. So I never really worked with self-striping. But now that I've realised that you can just do that, pop in a you know a square heel and it, it looks absolutely fine, then I have I have been work using a lot more self-striping yarns, which is really nice. So yeah, there we go, and I'm on to the second one. Not that far, but it's just been bedtime knitting, so I haven't really done that much, but I'm well into it really. And I've got this much left, so. Okay. It's looking lovely. It is. So I used two and a half millimetre needles. I'm back to two and a half for Dan. There we go. Great. Lovely. Lovely. Dan Jones. Yes. What's on your needles? Well. I, I didn't pin this up. Anyone who saw oh, last week's instalment of Journey to the Centre of the Yoke will know that I cast on a new hat. Oh, a new colour work oh, hat. Oh, this is lovely. And I feel like I've come home. In fact, I'm so happy about it. Mm -hmm. I, I can say with abandon, I'm in love and I don't care who knows <laughs> it. Elf. Because, it, it, appropriate that it's elf, because this hat is unbelievably Christmassy. Oh, it is. The first thing I'll do is I'll show you the colours. It's these, it's Drops Charisma. And there's a lovely, is that white or cream? Cream, I think. Cream, green and red. Now, the primary colours within this hat will be those two, but then it will be finished off with that, and then I think it needs a white pom-pom on the top. Yeah, a pom-pom of some sort. Definitely. Yeah. And you're going to look epic in this. It's for me, a Christmas hat. Oh, my goodness. How fun. And it's the first time... What weight is this again? Sport? It's DK. DK. A sport. What is he on sport? about? Sport. What sport? How much thinner is sport than that? A little bit. But not a lot. No. It's the first time I've done colour work. You know, I like to approach things with a clear plan. As you know, the first stage of me knitting colour work was using thicker yarn. Was it Aaron? Yeah. Yep, so started with Aaron and I knit three hats, or is it four hats, using Aaron. Then thought, right, okay, the moment is getting close. We're moments really away from having to start the yoke of the solia because I'm nearly up. On the on the second sleeve and then it'll be time to join 
and get going with that yoke. And that's going to be so much fun because those colours that you picked oh, lovely, yeah. are just well, superb. We'll show you next time. Absolutely. You know, enough talking about the song. It's time for us to talk about the to the top hat. I'm now getting used to saying that. I struggled greatly on Journey to the Centre of the Yoke and much hilarity was had. You should watch that episode, Ken. You, right. you, you may well laugh a little bit because I just couldn't say it. To the top hat well yeah. it just it just didn't work anyway it's a really cool pattern actually i'm really really it's imp- nit picks i think isn't it i'm really impressed with it yeah it's a nit picks pattern that's that's the the, the 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 pattern and i'll link it obviously in the show notes below but this I, is it and this is the first time you've seen it look da, da, da. Oh, oh it's marvelous <laughs> <laughs> it's marvelous it is Shall I hold it? Yeah, I absolutely. I really looked at it closely. Watch out, because it's really slippy. But the needles are great. I have no issues at all with the needles, and I'm enjoying very much Which using it. Oh, right, yeah. It's nip, just nip pro novas. It, it's the most... Look at that. I'm just getting into the, the, the more complicated bits of colour work, and it is just a, a really fun... Uh, now, I, I did change the pattern a little bit because I thought it would be cool to do twisted rib. Oh, yes, you yeah. did. You, yeah, there's twisted rib. So I've done twisted rib. And, you know, for a first attempt with this weight, I'm I'm pretty happy with mm. it. It's getting better as well it's as great. I go through. And it started off okay. You know, there's the odd little issue, but, you know, I'm feeling a whole but lot that's better. Gonna, when you look, that's going to block. Yeah. Nicely. Absolutely. You've got enough, there's enough give in his floats. Well, I've been stretching them out as often as possible and it, I, I don't recall seeing too much. No, I mean, it looks fairly smooth on the outside now. So yeah. once it's had a lovely relax, I think it'll be pretty good. The only thing that we I'm said is that his cast on was really loose and it looks a bit, and again, a blocking will, will help it, but there's quite a lot of, loopy cast on bits if you know what i mean do you know where he's done it and i know loose. why there's an issue with that my cast on used to be too tight mm. so i started using the german twisted for socks so you know you didn't get blooming tide marks when you wore my socks mm. and i also for long tail have started to try and slacken off and because i'm making a sort of conscious attempt to try and do it l- looser it's just turning out not mm, good mm. so I'm just going to stop trying to do it looser because I think I'm much better now than I was when you know we identified mm. the issue with my so I think if I just go for it on long tail I think it'll be fine it's really nice it, it really is mm. super super fun it's been a lovely you know next one after knitting th- well I knit uh, the, the the Susan B. Anderson uh, Snowflake hat thingy mm. and then I've knit three of the mono Mies, which have just been superb and I've loved knitting those and you know this now it just feels like a really nice mm. flow onwards and you said you were really enjoying this weight of yarn as well doing colour work with this weight of yarn that's what I'm in love with yeah and it's lucky really because I've got a whole yoke to knit on the solia I really love DK weight yarn I think it's brilliant very versatile so it's the, to the top hat I'm into a really challenging bit, actually. Yeah, we'll show you. It's like a kind of... It looks a bit like... Union uh, Jack. Union Jack. Can you see at the top there? It's like a sort of X factor X. <laughs> it's lovely. And then the reason it's called to the top is like the top of the hat, you're doing a contrast colour, which I think is super fun. You can see that pattern a bit more, can't you, there? And I really like that idea. And I said, oh, do you know what? Let's go with red, white and green and have it as a, my Christmas hat. And I'll just wear it around December, which I think would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And Brian, you can borrow it as well. I'm just thinking actually now about knitting another one. Yeah. <laughs> and if you, if you knit but it in red, white and red, white and blue. <laughs> red, white and blue. Well, you could do it. would look like a Union Jack, wouldn't it? Good. We did change one thing, actually. The pattern... Before the rib, it has you knit a few rows plain. You can see there's a little roll going on. Didn't really, didn't really see the point of that, of doing that little rolled bit. So we decided not to do that. So we just went straight into ribbing and ignored the few knit rows. It's just an extra little detail. I like clean ribbing. But yeah, I prefer just the clean line of 
which is why I swapped out as well and, and, and put in the Twisted. And it was, it's interesting actually, it's really good workout, I think. Specifically, I find, stitches, for, yeah. for, for, for the right hand, you know, you're really working, you're working the muscles around here. And or certainly that's what it feels like for, for me. And for me as a, you know, as a drummer, it's really good because it's like working out muscles mm. which used to work out an awful lot when I was playing You've got lot. really strong wrists and hands, haven't you? Because that's Yeah, that sounds wrong. Well, no, you have. Yeah, it's because of the drumming. It's because of the drumming, yeah. It's like your... I think drumming builds up muscles in the lower part of your arm, yeah, not necessarily up here, is it? Because that's the energy comes from this part. Is that correct? That's what you always used to tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Because the action is like that, isn't it? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> That's all good. No, it's no, true. It is. I'm, I'm not going to disagree with any of that. It's just interesting that of all the people who would give a, a short drum lesson, <laughs> it would be you. It wasn't hardly a drum <laughs> lesson, was it? It's the, ergonomics it's the ergonomics of drumming. Actually, it is an interesting conversation because, mm. you know, when you think about, you know, what you're doing when you're knitting, we play so many instruments as well because guitar mm. similar, piano's the same, mm. flute, saxophone, trumpet, not quite so much because you're just using those three fingers, really. Mm. And, but, you know, so many instruments, you can see the links. And then, you know, when you consider how many times I've said how knitting patterns are so similar to music and just the way it all comes together, mm. it is so much, there's so many links. What else is on your needles? Well, I'm also knitting a hat. That's exciting, isn't it? Is, it? It's, an, it's an exciting hat. It doesn't look yes. very exciting at this moment. Not at this moment. But it's going to be. The excitement will come. Yes. I saw this pattern only yesterday morning. It was just one of those patterns where I thought straight away, I need to knit that. And then I was trawling my brain thinking, have I got anything in stash for this? And I'm thinking, do you know what? I think I might have. It's fate. And, and you did. I really, yeah, I just wanted to avoid having to buy something, you know, because I've got a lot of stash and I thought I must have something. And I think this That's will work. That's got to be a moment with all knitters where they're like, yeah. yes. Yeah, I think this will work. The stars align. Yeah. Perfect pattern. Stash, needles, mm. and I want to knit it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And you can just get going and seize that moment, you know, because in a week's time, by the time you've decided to order some yarn and it's arrived... You've moved on. You've moved on to something else, so yeah, that's true. But it's a hat and it's called Alaska, and I just I love that, I'd love to go to Alaska. This, <laughs> this is the pattern. So you can see it's a colourwork hat, but can you see the background yarn is like a gradient? And then you've got those trees at the front, so it looks like it's sort of like a sunset behind or a, a sunrise or what, you know, just a beautiful sky. So I thought, right, have I got anything that will work? The pattern is fingering weight. The pattern calls for a skein of Knit Pick Stroll and a skein of Knit Pick's Chroma fingering, and that's the, the gradient graduated sort of yarn. Didn't have either of those. I did have the Knit Pick Stroll Tweed, which I recently ordered. If you remember, I spoke about that last time. But I just thought the Tweedy bits wouldn't work in it. And I didn't have just any normal st Stroll. And it's quite a difficult yarn to find a comparison for. I did do that yarn sub thing. And it didn't really bring up anything that I thought was very similar but then I remembered that I'd just ordered and it had just arrived a couple of days beforehand some yarn that I thought might work however I didn't have this dark colour I tend not to to, to gravitate towards dark colours but when I looked on the projects on Ravelry there's over 400 quite a lot of them used a light coloured yarn for the trees and for the ribbon and it looked really cool it looked more like the ones that were bright white, it looked like there was snow all on the trees. And then the ones that were not quite as bright white as that maybe looked um, like it was shadow on snow, if you know what I mean. I've decided to use, what I'm using is this, and I don't know if this is a new yarn. I saw somebody knitting some socks with this on Instagram. I can't remember who it was. And I thought, my goodness, that looks really nice. And it's a Regia yarn, and it's Merino Yak four ply so it's 58% wool 28% polyamide and 14% yak 
But because of the yak being, I think the yak must be naturally like a slightly darker shade, you get this kind of heathery look on the yarn. So this is the colour I'm using, which is this sort of neutrally colour, but it's very heathery. I love these. This is, this is actually a ball. This would be classed as a ball of yarn. Not a skein, this one, but I think we just tend to call everything a skein, don't we? But I love how it's, can you see inside where you can see how it's wound? I love that. And I love that I didn't have to wind it up either. I'm just knitting straight from it, not from the center, just from the outside. So I've got this kind of naturally color. And the number is 7510. They did have names, but I can't remember the name of this one because it was in German. It was quite hard to find in stock anywhere, this. I got this from, I think it was Derrimore's. Love knitting, I think pretty much all of the colours were out of stock at the moment. It's lovely. It's really plump. It's super plump, actually. You get, what yardage do you get? It's 100 grams, 400 metres. So it's a typical sort of sock yardage. It just feels very, very plump. It's lovely and soft. The Yak probably has a minor prickle, but nothing that bothers me. And it, it's just, it just feels really, really nice. So I thought, right, I'm gonna use that as my background color. And I knew in my stash, I had a couple of balls of this, which is Lang Yarns Millie Colory Baby. And this is one of those gradient yarns, very similar to the Knit Picks Chroma, I think, but these are 50 gram balls. And I thought, those together look with this is the trees and then this is the sort of gradient background I thought it it might look like a like it was a snowy tree sort of scene but maybe like I said that the shadows are falling and it's getting to sunset and then you get all of these lovely colours coming through or it's the northern lights or it's the northern lights that would work as well wouldn't it I'd just go with that yeah so I'm hoping it will work there are some darker shades in there you can see but then there also is a shade that's quite similar to the yarn it's the northern but lights I'm hoping, all the way so I think that will work and this colour this one is oh I don't know what colour that is I mean I'm not sure which of those is the number but it's this one but it's the Lang Millie Colory Baby, and this is just 50 grams. The pattern says up that you only need about 40 grams of the main colour and about 20 grams of this. So I'll have plenty left over from this to make a pair of socks, you know, that would fit me. 60 grams would be enough for me. And I may do a, sh a slightly shorter ribbon as well, because the rib is two, just two by two, and it calls for nine centimetres. I've no idea what that is, I'm an inch type person it's probably about three and a half inches isn't it which is quite a lot because it's cuffed if you look in the picture they've cuffed it over I'm not really a cuffed over person I don't think for hats so I think I'm just gonna knit it I've not even shown you what I've knit have I I'm in my excitement I only cast this on last night but I've got about inch inch and a half maybe so you can see it's just two by two rib at the moment Nothing hugely exciting to see, but it's very nice to knit with. It's really, really lovely to knit with. I would definitely think this would make a great pair of socks. It would be fantastic for cables and texture, showing those off, it would be lovely. I did buy another colour, I'll show you that. I bought this one, which is this gorgeous, golden, mustardy colour. Isn't that gorgeous? And that one is... Oh, it's right inside, 7504, that one. But it's beautiful, that, isn't it? I think it was about £11 a ball, which is more expensive than, say, an opal. Definitely more expensive than an opal, but that'll be because the yak will be more expensive, I think. So, yeah, and the pattern seems very clear at the moment. It's very simple. I did change one thing actually. It calls for needle sizes three millimeter and three and a half millimeter. It changes to do the color work because obviously with color work you have a tendency to have a tighter gauge. The amount of stitches that you cast on to me seemed quite a lot for, for a three millimeter needle. Having knit other fingering weight hats and knowing on three millimeter how many I normally cast on, I thought this seems a bit higher than that so I went down a needle size so I'm using 2.75 for the rib and I've got 3.25 for the 
for the colour work so I thought that might just correct that because a few people on Ravelry did say that it came out a little bit big. If I do decide not to do the sort of cuffed brim you can always kind of adjust the length of it if it's not going to be if you think it's not going to be long enough you can always knit some more rows just in the gradient bit once you finish the colour work you know before you do the decreases just to get the right length of hat that you normally have so yeah I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited I'm kind of trying to knit through the rib really quick so I can get to to putting this in I'll be interested to see what happens because this is a single ply and I believe also that the chroma, the Knit Picks chroma that they've used is a single ply. So this is a single ply and this obviously is a plied yarn. So I'll be interested to see how that works with the colour work. But loads of people have knit them and they all look fine so it'll be fun. What else are you knitting? Oh my goodness. Look at that. That's lovely. Tremendous. So I've knit all the way through the body, all the way through one sleeve. And, I mean the cables look great. Mm. I, love cables. I have to do another cable jumper, I think. I know. Definitely. And I'm now I'm all the way down that sleeve and I'll stick my arm in. You can see the... it's lovely, isn't it? And I'm now just knitting the ribbing on this one. And then wow. it's something like twenty across the front, twenty across the back, something like that. I can't remember. A bit more than that. To pick up, you mean? Probably, it was probably on the first size it was 20 oh, and then it'll be, I definitely read 20 right. so it'll be something up from that won't it because I knit about the fourth or fifth size, I can't remember, I can't remember, mm, anyway, I can't remember, but, but it's only five rounds of ribbing on the collar so I mean it really is just moments away mm. from completion and then I mean block it hard and just see what it's like. Yeah I'm gonna, I mean I have put this on and it was, it was, it was very form fitting let's say it's quite it i mean to me it looks fairly small for the amount for the size that we've knit it's not huge is it but you know who knows with the block look that will pull out won't it so it might all be okay it'll be my gauge yeah i mean we, we've never really checked your gauge but i suspect that's playing a part and the sleeves the trend these days seems to be for sleeves to be very fitted on women's garments and that's just not my thing to have it feels like a sausage casing. Yeah. And that's, I think that's certainly a lot of the sweaters I see these days have got these really, you know, quite tight fitting sleeves. So we'll see how it goes, hopefully. Well, the other one, the, the Solia doesn't have form fitting no, sleeves. No, that one's the, quite the opposite, isn't it? And Although we have made like an adjustment. It's quite balloony, which is the other fashion, I think, at the minute. We've made an adjustment now on the, the, yeah. the pictures. So ours should be a, a bit tighter than right. the pictures are. Right. Because I can't remember we exactly did. what we did. We, we went down a needle size because yeah. we thought it looked too big. And to be honest, it looks about perfect, those sleeves. Mm. You, you put your army one and it did it. Yeah. It, it looked yeah. perfect. Yeah. And it's airy too, but, which I, mean, I quite gosh, like. The, gosh, it's got some weight to it there. I mean, it is lovely. There's isn't a lot it? of yarn in it. Yeah. And I mean, it might be okay, mightn't it? I don't well, know. Well, you look great in it we'll when, when you put it on. It would be a fabulous gift. But if it fits me and I feel okay in it, then I obviously want to keep it. But we'll see. But it's beautiful. You've done such an amazing job on that. So you just a cuff and a collar. I'll be finished. I'll just finish it. I'll just finish it, and because it, I mean that's. It'll be done for next time. Oh. Well, it will. It will. Won't it? Well, yeah. I might as well just finish it, mightn't I? Because you know, once those are picked up, I mean, I'll get that finished in the next couple of days, and then if you could pick me those mm. up, I mean, it's not going to take me no. long to knit five no. rounds, and no. then. And then that's and it. Then I'll, I mean, then I'll weave, block it. I'll, well, I'll weave in all your, in, your ends as well, because just to make sure they're nice and neat. So, so. that is my Samantha jumper. Yay! There it is. What else is on your needles? Right. It's another sock. And actually, I haven't cast the second one on yet, but the first one is here. I showed this on Instagram, so a lot of you will have seen it already. I'm we can thinking. compare the, the slip stitches oh, and can, the yeah. SSKs and yeah, things now. I've been in a bit of a, not a knitting slump because I've wanted to knit, but I've just not really known what I want to knit. And then the other day I just thought, oh, I know what I want to knit. I want to knit some scrappy socks. I've not done that for ages. That'll be fun. And I cast this on and finished it within about four days, this first sock because I was just kept wanting to knit. And I, I knit the, the leg much longer than I normally do because I was just enjoying it so much. So here's my first completed scrappy sock. Isn't it lovely? So I did 
15 rows of rib and then 10 rows of each stripe of each different yarn. And there is, yeah, the 16 different yarns in here. I used, for the cuffs, heels and toes, I just use like one yarn, even though they're longer than 10 rows, I just use one yarn just to, for neatness sake. It's all hand dyed. A lot of it is my hand dyed. Is that the side where, which side is it I've woven in ends on? That is the side. That is the side I've woven in ends on. So you can probably see there is a jog. You can, here's the jog running down here. And that's the side I've woven in all the ends on. But you know, as far as being able to see where you've woven in the ends, it's pretty good really, isn't it? It's not very obvious that that's the side. So these, so this, I'll, I mean, I won't tell you all of the yarns, but my ones are this one, this one, this one, this one, uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So quite a few are my own hand dyed. And then I've got, there's a fondant fibre in there, Dreams in Colour, just any that took my fancy, basically. And I just love it. I kind of wish I'd not used this one for the heel. I think it's a bit bright. I think it jars with the rest of it a little bit. But it's done now and it's fine, isn't it? And it's the heel, so it's not like it's the part that people see the most. And I do just cut the yarn, start the next colour, and then I weave them all in afterwards. And I know that's not a lot of people's favourite thing to do, and a lot of people just won't do that, and I totally understand. But it's not something that bothers me at all, and I really don't mind taking that time to finish an item so that it looks nice when I've had so much enjoyment knitting it. You know, it, it really, for me, the, the amount of enjoyment I got out of it it really, the thought that I have to weave in the ends is is not anything that would stop me doing it at all. It doesn't really, doesn't bother me. But if, if you know, if that's not your thing, I understand. But yarn, <laughs> yarn has ends. Well, yeah, yeah, but you don't have to weave in this many ends. Oh no, that's true, that's true. Because you've that's got true. two ends every time you change colour. Right. So there's a lot of ends to weave in. But I did it one morning, early morning. I just, you know, sat and did it. I don't know how long it took me, but it wasn't a long time. It was just my sort of early morning knitting that I do when I'm up at ridiculous o'clock because the it is sort of a key skill though. going back have messed me up. It's a key skill though, really, isn't it? Weaving, yarning, because... Yeah, I mean, I'll mean, show... And, 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 if you want to see the other side, I'll show you one of the areas where I've woven in. There you go. You can see it, but it's not terrible. That's where I've woven in and I go one way and then the other. And I have done tutorials on how I weave in ends, yes. haven't I? So yeah, it's not, not a bother for me. It's not, it's not difficult, put it that way. It's just a little bit time consuming. So let's have a look at this whole SSK versus slip knit past slip stitch over. So here's an SSK. I'll fold that over so that we're just looking at the SSK. So this is on an opal yarn, bear in mind, so it's a slightly thicker yarn than these hand eyes. So here's the SSKs. Can you see there? Now whether you want to freeze frame here, so I'll hold the SSK there, and this is the slip knit plus slip stitch over. It's probably not apparent just from looking like that, but if you wanted to freeze your screen and zoom in and have a look, then feel free to do that. But just from us looking, it just looks neater, doesn't it? The, the, I think the, the, the point from... It's smoother. The, the point from my sort of experience is uh, I've always had an issue with SSKs and splitting yarn. If I can do something else that looks as good as that, which, you know, you could argue quite strongly it looks better, then mm. I'm going to do that because if it's going to alleviate me, you know, just having so many issues, you know, it's one of the reasons why I've not particularly enjoyed knitting socks is keeping that, you know, that stitch as you're doing those, those decreases. It uh, just looks a bit smoother. Yeah. It's not as obvious. No. Where you've done the, the decrease to me. So give it a go. See what you think. 
it's fun to play around with these things, isn't it? To try different techniques. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Have you finished? Uh, yes, I've finished. Excellent. It's time for the next round of Knit or Forfeit. Oh yes, Neil, I think we should announce the winner of the oh. yarn now. Oh, right, okay. So, as you know, if you saw last episode, you have an opportunity every one of the four rounds of Knit or Forfeit that we play, so that's last episode, today, next episode, and the episode after, you can win a skin of Baker of Best Handout Yarn, died especially for Knit or Forfeit. Neil, the first winner we have drawn by random number, and it is Heather Cisneros. I hope I've said that right, Heather. And I we do probably haven't. I do apologise if I've, I've said that wrong, but Heather, does she just need to drop you? Yes, could you just drop me a line? On Ravelry probably is the easiest way, isn't it? I'm Bryony Bear on Ravelry. Um, just with your address, we've got your full name obviously, Just so just with your mailing address and I'll get this sent out to you. And this is the yarn that I've dyed. I called it Winter Sky because I thought it looked like do you know the colour of the sky just before it snows? It's got yeah. that kind of mauvey, purpley hue. Yeah. I thought it looked like that. So again, it's probably not transferring very well, but it's a greyish, purplish, with tiny little specks as if it's snowing just a little bit. I don't know if you can see any of the tiny little specks there. But it's a really lovely tonal, pretty yarn. So Heather. And it's MCN. Heather Cisneros, you yes. have won. That's kind of yarn. So get in touch and then guess the film to be... Jaws! On the line. It was indeed. That's not today's... Uh, no, it was not today. That's yes. the last one. The Fabulous Quint. Heather was, successfully guessed that the film was Jaws. So really well done, all of you who, who got that right. Because, you know, I think you'd need to know the film to, to, to get it. Yeah, you but would. But today, brand new film. So another opportunity to win. Is it... Four of those or? Um, no, I no. dyed up two of this colour and right. two of another colour. So right. on the next one, I'll do the other colour. I'll, I'll, I'll alternate it, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to say before we get this knit or forfeit round started is I know some people had difficulty in commenting on the thread last time. So this time we have set the thread, oh yes, well, we will have set the thread up. That's linked in the show notes below. I'll say competition thread. You click that, it'll take you to a page on Ravelry. And in there, you just put, just like before, what film you think it is. And you won't need to tell us who you are because, well, will they? Because it's on Ravelry. Oh, so no, because it'll Ravelry be your Ravelry name will be there, yeah. yeah. So we'll cool. know who you are. So today's competition, which you can enter after you've heard the, the sound that starts the quiz and the sound that ends the quiz. So if you want to enter today, you'll follow the link and you have until the 21st of November at 9 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time to enter and win a different skein of Bakery Bears Hand I Do On. Enough talk, let's get on with the show. questions and every single one of them is about knitting. I've not even heard of that one! These are all genuinely real sheep, but we have three lifelines. I've got a feeling the Black Welsh Mountain looks a bit more horny. Yes. The winner gets to choose anything that the loser has to knit for them. She will! Oh! Yay. to another exciting episode of Knit or Forfeit. Oh yes, we are back for the second in our brand new series. And my goodness, the tension is high. And why is it high? Because in the first round, if you didn't see it, Kay scored a grand total of nine points. Remember, Knit or Forfeit is the quiz for knitters. It's 10 questions all about knitting. You get three lifelines, 50-50, ask Instagram and text a friend. Remember, you can go for the answer without hearing the multiple choice options and you get two points. And in a change to previous series of Knit or Forfeits, the person who is wearing the most knitted items at the end of the four rounds gets an extra point. Oh yes. Now, you may be wondering, where are my knitted items? Kay is here. Today she's asking the questions <laughs> and I am the contestant. And you're thinking, where are my knitted items? Well, I've not put them on yet. I'm gonna put them on in a second. And I've gotta say, I'm disgusted at Kay's tactics. 
What are my tactics? Because she's had on the dryer. <laughs> I've had on the dryer. I'm telling you, there are no clothes in it. <laughs> oh, she's to make just, it hotter. She's in the just kitchen. turned it on. He thinks I'm doing things to make it hotter in the kitchen. I'm not. I just need to dry clothes. It's true. It's true, I tell you. I've got to say, I'm quite concerned because I'm already warm. Because it's not a cold day again. It wasn't a cold day before and it isn't a cold day. It's about so 12, I, 13, 14 outside. I suppose that's fair, Kate, okay, really. It's fair. It's fair, because yeah. yes. if it had been freezing today, then that yes. wouldn't have been fair. wouldn't have been it? fair. Now, the one thing we haven't covered, and for those of you who can't remember, oh, there's, there's two special things to cover. The first thing is, of course, the prize for knit or forfeit. When we finished the, the, the four rounds, uh, the prize is the winner gets to pick something that the loser has to knit for them. And we will be unveiling that in the final episode of Knit or Forfeit. The most exciting thing about this series of Knit or Forfeit is you get the opportunity to win. Yeah! Oh yes! Now, if you remember from last time, and some, some criticism has been labelled at me, uh, has been thrown my way, that it was That's too it. easy. It's too easy. It was too easy. Uh, Last time I was thought it was easy. Last time we had the genius, He, I, I love Robert Shaw. Neil, just let me tell you a quick little story. There's a plumber uh, in the town where we live. There is. And he's called Robert Shaw. Yeah. And he, he's a fool. We see his vans driving around. He's a fool. Yeah. Because if he had a brain in his head on the side of his van, he would have written, I think you're going to need a bigger boiler. <laughs> I absolutely should. Instead, it just says Robert Shaw Plumbers. I realise that Roy Scheider says that line in the film, <laughs> but that's well, the line yeah, that, that yeah. would just, it would work perfectly. But yes, last time it was Robert Shaw, and I just think he's the best thing in that film. He is, absolutely. Other than the shark. Other than the shark. We love the shark. Yes, that it's never kind of worked. No, they yeah. had awful trouble with it filming it. It just kept breaking down, didn't it? I've read the book actually yeah. by, by yeah. one of the script writers, mm. and it's just the, it's a brilliant book. So you know, if you enjoy the film, you haven't read that book. I'll now I'll link it in the show notes below, um, and you go away and read it because it is just superb. But this time, it's a brand new movie from the seventies or the eighties, just the same as as before. Two bits of dialogue. You have to see if you can identify it. Okay, so there'll be um, a sound effect at the start and a sound effect at the end of the quiz. Uh, see if you can recognize. It and then head over to the link in the show notes below to the competition knit or forfeit link episode two uh, and you can enter remembering to tell us who you are uh, as along with uh, what film that you think it is but yes I need to don my woolen items so with the magic of television I shall now put them on Ta -da! There we go, ladies and gentlemen. I have on seven knitted items. I'm playing the tactics. I was gonna go with eight but, Two hats. Yeah, but better than one. Th they are, but I think that's crazy because we have another round each to go, and that's the moment to push and the boundaries. You've got to pull out all the stops. Yeah, yeah, because I'll see what you wear next time. I'm going to be piling those shawls on like well, you've no, no. never seen. Just be sensible. No, 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 no. No, I won't be sensible <laughs> at all. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. The, the moment has come. In the words of P.T. Barnum, this is the moment you've been waiting for. It's time for the quiz to start. So are you ready? You have to peel your ears. You can't really peel use that Peel your ears? Peel your eyes. Where does that expression come from? You don't peel your ears. I know you don't, but you know, peel your Keep eyes. Keep your eyes Keep peeled. Keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, it's not peel your eyes. It's not peel. You always say that. Peel your eyes, everybody. And I'm thinking that's just the most ridiculous thing to Someone say. out there will know. Keep your eyes peeled. Yes. I don't know where that comes from. I'm Somebody will sure. tell us. So if you can keep your eyes peeled, can you keep your ears peeled? Well, I think you can, Is especially that... when you bells the, peel, don't they? They do. Yeah. So the peel of bells. Keep your keep your ears Why peeled. Where does that come from? It sounds wrong. This is it. We know the quiz started because we hear a sound like this. I'm ready for question one. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Question one. Yes. It's a photo question. Yes. This sheep yes, comes uh, no. from the long wool family. Okay. Well, I hope it's not. Okay, continue. They are bred for their white wool, which has very long wavy locks yeah. with a brilliant luster and a smooth surface. Okay. The yarn produced from this sheep is sleek and shiny with a lovely drape. Okay. Well, do you know what? I'm impressed with my knowledge already because I know what it isn't. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So you'll need the options. You, you don't know without telling me, of course. You could guess. 
I suppose, but there's Kate, quite a lot of... Kate, is this a picture question? Yes. Oh, you haven't seen a picture? <laughs> So you'll need the options. <laughs> Could okay. I see the picture first? Oh, let me find the picture. Aren't they cute? They really are cute. And don't you zoom? No. I'm I'm already. I mean, they are super cute, aren't they? Oh, they're lovely. Look at their fringes. And there's a gorgeous sheep. I love sheep. That's I want to go stroke sheep. them. They look happy too, yeah. aren't they? I think they're about to be fed. Do you think? Yes. They're in a look. Look at that. Field. Do you know what I'm doing Isn't already? Lovely? I'm already playing the game because I'm looking at that picture and I'm thinking that looks English. The landscape. Yes. I looked at the landscape on the other one actually. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, of course I'm going to need the options. Okay. There's no chance that I'd be able to pluck that one. There's only one sheep I could say. Right. And I know it's not that one. Is it A. Tease water. Never heard of it. B. B. Romney. C, Blueface Lester, or D, Cotswold? Do you want to look at the picture again? Well, you didn't say Wensleydale, so... Uh -huh. That's the one you were thinking of. Well, when you say long one, I just think... Wensleydale, well, Wensleydale. That, Wensleydale. Yeah, yeah, that is a long one. But there's no way you would describe that as the way you just described Well, that. Wensleydale is sleek and shiny with right. a lovely lustre, but it's quite rustic, Wensleydale. Yes. I, I think Wensleydale's quite rustic, you know, it's quite prick, a prickly yarn. Yes, it but is. But it is, it, is, it is a shiny yarn. Right. Well, I don't think it's Cotswold. Okay. Because that does not look like the Cotswolds. Ah. <laughs> that's that's what the... Ta I use the same theory. Let, let me look, let me look. I use look, the same theory look, on my question. So, so... It, it, so, Teeswater... Yeah, tea, I mean, tea's water, that, tea's. So, that's around here. You see, Romney, is that from, like, Scotland? No. Uh, no, I can't look at you, because you just give stuff away. Well, I, yeah, I've got hair. Oh, it's attached. Yes, yes, that's where hair comes from. No, Kate. it was a really long one, it must have been one of mine. Do you want to use any lifelines at all? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm pushing the button. What would you like to use? 50-50. 50-50. Okay. This is terrible. I'll take We're on question one. <laughs> I'll take away two and I will leave A, Tease Water. Yeah. Or C, Blue Face Lester. Blue Face Lester. Is that your final answer? Yes. Is it correct, everybody? Is that a BFL sheep? Unfortunately, it's a tease water. Oh no! I thought it looked like the countryside round here. Yeah, it did. That's why I did it. That's why I chose that one. I thought, oh, we'll use the countryside as the clue and look around. It looks like up the road, which basically is up the road those sheep are from. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. We've got to get everyone correct now. Or, or go for one without the multiple choice. Okay, that's true. You Back on track. That. Go okay. on. There, it's possible you might do this next one without the multiple choice. Question two, baby. Right, okay. are you ready? Question two. Yes. This type of sweater was developed in 19th century England as a hard-wearing garment for fishermen. It's characterised by its dark, dense yarn and rich pattern combinations. What is the name of this type of sweater? Any idea? I don't think I can think of any types of sweaters. <sighs> I'll need the, the right. multiple okay. choice. Is it A, a smock? B, an Aran? C, a Gamsey? Or D, an Argyle? Well, I don't think it's A or... C. Okay. I think it's B or D. Doesn't Aaron have lots of cables? No, you can't say. I think Aaron's got lots of cables on it. So that would lead me to to believe. And I think... I don't know. Isle of... Dark, dense yarn. Isle of Aaron. Oh, whoa. Smock, Aaron, No, Gamsey, no, I don't want to hear Argyle. A and C. A and C is gone. Just give me B and D. B, an Aran sweater, D, yeah. an Argyle sweater. I'm going Argyle. D. Is that your final answer? Yes. Is he right? He's the furthest away oh, no. that he possibly could be. What is it? It's a Gansey. <laughs> You've never heard... 
<laughs> in never in heard of my a life, <laughs> I've never heard anyone say the word Gansey. They knit them in filey. Right. The, I didn't know that. And the traditionally they are the knit on double pointed needles in right. the round, like really long double pointed needles. Right. They're usually like a dark navy blue. Right. And um, all of the patterns, it's, it's all knit pearls basically. Right. And each of the patterns means something in like the fisherman world. Like one will look like a net, another one looks like the cobbles. So it's a Gansey or sometimes called a Guernsey as well. Right. Um, but traditionally they, they're called Ganseys. Right. Next please. Oh, question three everyone. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. I've knitted Bryony three love bots and three Jerry the Musical Monkeys. Yes. Who designed these patterns? Well, I'll know when you say. So you'll need the answers. M maybe, maybe not. This is so frustrating because I'll totally know this answer. But I have a feeling because I've never knit anything by this person. I think if I'd knit something by this person, I think it would have sort of gone in and stayed in. She's written loads of books. Hasn't she? Mm -hmm. Oh, crumbs. Look, I'll just have to take the one point, so okay. go on, give me the answers. Okay. Is it A, Rebecca Danger, B, Julie Williams, C, Susan B. Anderson, or D, Susan Claudino? Okay, it's Rebecca Danger. Final answer? Yes. Well, thank heavens, he's finally got one right. He has a point. <laughs> yes. How frustrating. Of course, it's Rebecca Danger. Although it's not frustrating because there is no way <laughs> that I would ever have, have got that name. You wouldn't have known that without No, you would have had to have told me. Yes. Okay. Yes. And well, I, well done. Yay. Yeah, yay. <laughs> I mean that. <laughs> I'm saying yay for me. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> Come on then. Okay. Are we ready for question four? Yes. The basket weave stitch is so called because of its resemblance to wicker baskets. How is this stitch pattern produced? With yarn and needles. <laughs> Not a clue. Not a clue. No. Right, okay. Do you know what basket weave looks like? No, I don't oh, think so. God. Okay. Give me the answers. Is it A, cables, B, lace, C, slip stitches, or D, knits and pearls? You would think that it would be cables, because you can get those sorts of effects, can't you? You can get effects where things look like things, but equally, you said lace, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, cables, it, lace, slip stitches, or knits and pearls? I'm not certain, though, that lace would ever look like a... It would be a very open basket, wouldn't it? I mean, knits, knits and pearls seems... No, it can't be that. It can't be C. So... That was D. D. What was C? Slip stitches. I don't care about the, the usage of lifelines and I'm going to use another one. Oh. I'm exciting. a certainly am. And to do that, I have to remove a glove. <laughs> Not to throw down the gauntlet, although I should do. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to text a friend. Okay. So it's delivered. Okay, so, so his phone come must back be on. Yes, question. yes. We'll come back to that question later. So I have used my second lifeline. I have texted a friend. That friend is Nathan Taylor, also known as the Sockmetician, and we will see how he responds. And I guess he's going to know that. And I would guess. Yeah. If if Nathan doesn't know that, I'll be shocked. And I would guess he's going to say the one I thought cables. Continue. The first spinning wheels were used between 500 and 1000 AD. Which country did they originate in? Well, I mean, I, I think there's an obvious... Oh. There's an obvious one, but the way you've asked the question creates a historical dilemma for me. Mm. Because the country which I think it would have come from didn't properly form until after 800. Oh. Oh, give me the answers. Okay, is it A, Iraq? Yeah. B, India? Yeah. C, China? Yeah. Or D, Italy? I mean, oh, it's a tricky one because, uh, well, no, you see, good looking up. So, I'm tempted to go, I'm tempted to ask the audience. 
I think I, I push the button once more. I remove the glove once more. And I'm going to ask Instagram. So I have asked you this. I've used all my lifelines. Question six is a yes. photo question. Yes. This designer is known for her love of Fair Isle and colour work. She's written several books and currently lives in Edinburgh. One of her most popular patterns on Ravelry is a jumper called Stroker and has 1,097 projects. Okay. Who is this person? There she is. You don't know? No. Do you reckon that was staged in the background? <laughs> Well, yes, I'm saying, I'm thinking that's possibly one of her designs. Well, I know that's one yes, of her designs. Yes, I just wonder who he is. I wonder where I he's going. I think it's just some random biker. The man on the bike. It's a tricky one because I've got an idea and I, I'm, I'm not certain who she could say. I mean, she, you could say other names. That might make me think it's that person. It's going to be so frustrating if it is who I think it is. But I've got no idea. I had, I was guessing more from y your description. Right. Than from that photo. That photo oh, is right. no help whatsoever. <laughs> Go on, give me the answers. Give okay. The answers. Is it A, Kate Davies? No. B, Isolde Teague? C, Jennifer Stangas? Well, it's not Jen Stangas. Or D, Mary Jane Muckleston? Well, I'm now, I'm now I'm annoyed. Because you know who it is. Now I'm annoyed. Because you had that name in your mind. Well, yeah, when, when you described, from the description, that was the only person I could think of. But, you know, to be honest, I don't know. What she looks like. Got no clue. <laughs> Did, was it B, Isolde Teague? Isolde was B. Yeah, was I'm going to say Isolde Teague. So, is he correct? Is it Isolde Teague? Well, you'll have to wait. <sighs> oh! <laughs> And we will come back later no. and then you will find out whether he is correct. That's not fair. Yes, it's fair. You did it to oh. me. And you're going to make me sit here for 20 minutes now, I aren't you? Whilst you am. waffle on about what's off your needles. Yes, indeed. <sighs> That's <laughs> not fair. Right then. Okay, so let's get on with the rest of the show and I'll see you back here in not but a jiffy and we'll find out if I'm right. I know it doesn't look like I'm doing very well, but there's four more questions and I have two outstanding lifelines in play. So I could score another six points before the end of today's show. So he could. don't That's true. panic. Do not panic. Now, I'm disgusted at your tactics. My tactics? Yes, at turning on the heaters and I'm telling you she had the, the, the central heating on. I didn't. She's trying to get me to take my I knitted garments off. Don't I look great? I was particularly impressed with my addition of the handbrake scarf. Yes. Lit by the wonderful Sarah Hepworth. Lovely Sarah knit oh, those yes. for us. That is my prized scarf, I do have to say. Yeah. Yes, I love it. I, I love, love it. a scarf. I love the length of it, actually. It's a great length, You yeah. can do the proper sort of... I do mine doubled over and then pulled yeah, through. Yeah, that's what I was just yeah. trying to demonstrate, but I couldn't really remember because no, it's you your just way. cheated and just put it around your neck so it wouldn't be as warm. Yes. I'm mm. trying to <laughs> limit the heat it's intake. It's a cunning plan. Did you hear the first clue? I've got to say this is one of my favourite movies. Yeah. I, I, when that movie came out, I absolutely loved it. I went to the cinema to see it. I bought the soundtrack. Had the soundtrack on tape, actually. Tape? I mean, yeah, wow. Yeah. That was never... A, I, I sort of fell in that short period of time between records and CDs. Oh, right. I had lots of records. So I was a, a tape boy. Right. I had I, tapes as well. Yeah. But I did have records. But had... I, well, I just loved it. I loved it. So there's another clue coming later. So, you know, maybe you're thinking possibly uh, the next clue will really, really help. I promise. It will. Yes. Yeah. But if you're scratching your head thinking, what on earth was that? It's one of the most... But if most... you're a fan of this film, you, wouldn't, just, you would not know it. It's such that. an iconic scene. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And, you know, if you actually go and look at that, you can find that clip from yeah. that first bit on YouTube. Yeah. And it's had so many hits. So hopefully it's, it's really funny. someone out there knows really now. Really funny. It's definitely harder, though, this time. Mm. Enough talk. It's time for us to find out. Kay Jones, what's off your needles? Oh, I do have a couple what's of things. What's off your needles? Yeah, I do have a couple of things, but I also have something finished that I did not knit. How exciting is this? This has never happened before. 
that I've shown a finished object that we haven't knit. No, that's true. Well, as you changed it to we, that then became... No, we, we. Yes, yes. We, we. <laughs> but the last time we visited my mum, she'd been knitting this and she asked me if I'd take it away and wash it and weave in the ends and make it look pretty, is what she said. It's a, it's a little baby blanket and it's for my niece. My lovely niece, Lizzie, is due a baby in February. It's her first baby and it's a girl. We know that it's a girl. And she's, she's thrilled actually that it's a girl because she did say to me, she texted me and she's like, oh, you know, thank goodness I wouldn't have a clue what to do with a boy. And it just made me laugh because I felt that way as well when I was pregnant. I was yeah. like, I honestly wouldn't know what to do with a boy. I know that seems a bizarre thing to say because you would just deal with it, wouldn't you? But what Lizzie meant is because she's got a much younger sister there's a 10 year age gap. So Lizzie kind of was like a little mother to her younger sister when she was growing up. So she's, she kind of knows what to do with the girl. And so she was thrilled that it's, it's gonna be a girl. So my mum wanted to knit a little blanket. So she, she has, and I've washed it and I've given it a block and here it is and it's lovely. Now mum's like, oh, it's rubbish. She said it's rubbish because mum's got arthritis now and her tension isn't as good as it used to be and she can't really read intricate patterns like she used to. So she just said, I've just stuck my own pattern into it. But I think it's come out lovely. So here's the little baby blanket. It's quite big, actually. She said, oh, do you think it's big enough? I said, crikey, yeah, it's definitely big enough. Look. And it's got like a, a broken sort of garter. It's a garter stitch broken rib sort of thing going on with a moss stitch border. It's really nice. And she's just knit it in a white acrylic. I've no idea what the yarn is, I'll be honest, because I didn't see the ball band. She used 300 gram balls and there was this much left. Wow, that's white, isn't it? Oh, that's very white acrylic. It, I mean, it's acrylic, it's fine, it's soft. It can be thrown in the washer. I said to mum actually, it'd be perfect blanket just for the pram, I think. You know, when they're out for walks and things, I think it'll be lovely. So it's lovely, mum. It turned out really nice, well done. Yay. And there was no drop stitches. She's like, oh, I don't know what'll be going on, but there wasn't any drop stitches. I just had to weave in the ends. I gave it a lovely soak. So that's the first thing. I finished the hat I was working on. You haven't. I did. And we did, I did give this a name. I've remembered what the name was. <laughs> so this is the one that I said I was gonna write up the pattern and I'm gonna pop it out as a free pattern on Ravelry. So I finished it because it's got a lovely tassel. I love a tassel. And it's got these sort of graduated stripes. The main color is the John Arban. Harvest no. Hughes, John Arbonne. Thank you. Harvest Hughes, and this is the Bramble colour. And I've got all of this left, so definitely enough to make another. Matches my top, totally is the same colour as my top. Look, it disappears when I put the yarn on my top. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, it's the Harvest Hughes Bramble, and then the mini that I used, I just used a hand-dyed mini from Hedro Yarns. And I still had, I think I used all together about 10 grams of that mini with the bit in the tassel and then I think this was about 7 grams down here. So if you've got 10 grams of a mini you can make one of these, you know, with some fingering weight yarn. And it's lovely and it fits really nicely. I just gave it a little bit of slouch, which is how I like them. I knit to about 9 inches before I started the decreases and it's quite a sharp decrease, which again is how I kind of like this sort of hat. Tassel's in the way, but you can see it just produces this really pretty, it looks like a beret, doesn't it? And I really like that effect. So that's all done, and I'm gonna call this Autumn Snow, because the color is very autumn, isn't it? But then the white with the speckles just made me think of snow. And actually, the reason I called it that is because when I was finishing this off, we had a flurry of snow, didn't we, we did. one day? It was bonkers. And it was proper big fat snowflakes and it only lasted for maybe an hour or so and it didn't settle or anything. But that just made me think, well, we're getting snow in autumn and I was knitting this. So I thought, perfect, I'll call this autumn snow. So as soon as I get the opportunity, I will write this up and I'll pop it out as a free pattern and I'll, I'll let you know when I've done that. And then I finished the thrummed mittens. Woohoo! Shall I pop them on? These are so fun. 
And then wiggle my hand into those thrums. Uh, look at those. How floofy are they? Look, look how floofy they are. Floofy should definitely be a word. So they're all done and I've finished the tutorial obviously because I've finished them now. The tutorial's all finished and I've got a lovely pair of very warm mittens. I mean these are going to be so nice in winter. I did think should I gift these to someone but then I thought no, not going to do that. I want to keep these because me and Bryony will wear these and they're just really nice. The thumb was a kind of like an afterthought thumb I suppose. I don't know what it's called but you basically just you don't do any gusset increases. You just take stitches off and then cast on over the top. So you've created like a, a, like a slot, I suppose, isn't it? And then you just carry on knitting and then you come back and pick up those stitches and then knit them. So there's no gussets, you can see. It's just straight up. And it fits fine. I don't think it's quite as good as a gusset for me. It's a bit like socks, isn't it? but it's absolutely fine and they're lovely very warm gosh they are incredibly warm actually i can't wait to wear those when it's really cold so the pattern i used was the easy mittens with thrums by debbie wilbur and it's a free pattern on ravelry i made a few little amendments which i've explained in the tutorial that i've done but essentially i followed that pattern and it's lovely. And the two yarns that I used were the Dererum Natura Gilead was the main yarn. And this is the natural, yeah, natural colour. And I've got probably about half the ball left, maybe a bit less than half. That's the main colour. And then the fluff was from Lovely Deb at Fondant Fibre. And it was her High Peaks collection, Tissington Hill, a Shetland Merino bamboo. And again, I bet I've got half of it left. So I've got enough to make another pair if I wanted to. Um, brilliant. And the combination was really lovely, I thought. I, I liked the Gilead yarn, but for some reason I wasn't mad on it. I don't know why I can't put my finger on it. It was very nice. I don't know, I just didn't love it. But perfectly lovely for this project. And I'm thrilled to have another pair of thrum mittens because my other ones were looking a bit threadbare. Yes. Uh, so there we go. Da -da -da. Lovely, fluffy mittens. Those other ones make you look like a tramp. I don't think they do. I think that's <laughs> slight exaggeration, really. They are very old, though. They are quite old now, yeah. Yes. I they think you should wear those on your next round of knit or forfeit. Well. Gosh, I don't know if I could, actually. They're really hot. And then I'll put the heater on that's just down there as well. I didn't put the heater on, honestly. It's making it out like I'm some... Is that all you've finished with your what's off your needles? Yes, that's pretty good, seeing as I did actually finish some stuff. Yes, well, come back next time and I will have finished at that's least fine. one That's fine. I don't need to finish anything then for next time. You can do all the finishing. Yes, because it will be a garment. Excellent. Yes, it will be a garment, which I think counts for... How many socks does a garment count for, do you think? How does it count on Climb Every Mountain? That's how we should gauge it. Oh, right, I need yes. to check. Yes, yes, we shall check. check and we shall tell you next time. Oh, yes, it's time to go back to find out how am I going to finish off my round? Now remember, this is just the first part because each of us has 20 questions in total. So, you know, at the end of this round, I'll have my halfway score. Case halfway score is nine, what will mine be? And really, the game is, is only going to kick off when we know where I'm at and yeah, where Kay's at, yeah. because that's then the moment where you go, right, okay, I'm putting on as much woolen items as I physically can, <laughs> and I'm going for every question without hearing yeah. what the multiple choice answers are. That's what I'll be are. doing next time. Yes. Let's find out how I do. She's had the heater on. I've been having to turn it off. She's trying to get me to take off items of knitted wear. I'm not doing it. We need to know if I'm correct. I, I'm 99% certain I'm correct. Is it Isolde Teague? Is it is older? Yes, of course it is. I will read on my glove. Well, see, I thought this next one was really easy. But yeah, you're going to do the same thing and say you've not got a clue. Okay. I thought I've made these really easy. I'm so sorry that. Stop apologising. Okay. Question seven. Yes. The word hap, H A P. Now, I have a certain amount of knowledge of haps. Oh, brilliant. That knowledge will now be blown out of the water no, by the rest no, of the case. No, question. It won't. You'll know the answer then. Please continue. 
The word hap yes. means a cover or wrap to keep warm. Right. Which island did the hap shawl originate from? Well, I've got to give you the answers because you've used all your lifelines. What do you want about? Oh, no, you could just answer. <laughs> Now you see why I am the presenter of Nettle Forfeit. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm very so, confused. I mean... Uh, Hapshaws, where do they come from? G give me some Okay, help. is it A, Shetland, B, the Faroe Islands, C, Iceland, or D, Orkney Islands? I think... It's either the Faroe Islands or Iceland. The problem I had there was, you know, they always say, don't they, that, you know, you should go with, go with your first instinct, don't they? You didn't have one. Well, no, no, no. When you start reading out the answers, you know, instinctively I thought, no, it's not Orkney. But Shetland sort of rang a little bit of a bell, but it's not ringing a loud enough bell. But the Faroe Islands and Iceland are ringing bells. I don't think it's the Faroe Islands, though. See, HAP. HAP. Is it short for something? Is it short for something? You don't no. have to tell me what it is. No, not as far as I'm aware, no. So it makes you think it's a foreign word. But of course it could be like Gaelic. I've always been drawn to Iceland. I'd like to go to Iceland. Yeah. I would really yeah. like to go to Iceland. I, I think the people look cool. Yeah. And, and the landscape looks yeah. amazing. I'm going to go with Iceland. And I'm going to be angry with you if it's not right. Me? <laughs> Why? I'm only kidding. Iceland. Final answer. Yes. Is Iceland correct? Do hapshaws come from Iceland, everybody? Everybody is hanging their heads in shame for you because a hapshaw or blanket comes from Shetland. So, how can you think it's Iceland? Because I like Iceland. No, no, genuinely, I thought that. It, it, I was drawn more towards the Faroe Islands and Iceland than... Well, you were closer with the Faroe Islands. Please continue. Okay. Question eight. Yes. You have just one item queued on Ravelry. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so hilarious that you only had one thing queued on Ravelry that I had to ask you this question. Can I just tell you, I don't know how to queue something <laughs> on Ravelry. <laughs> so... I don't know how that got there. Well, you must have done it. Unless you were on my profile no. one day. Okay, shall I give you the answers? Yeah, I've got, answers. I have no clue. You have just one item queued on Ravelry. Everybody's now going on to your thing, aren't they, and looking to see what it is. Is it A, the prairie socks? B, the Irish coffee? C, the bank head? Or D, the Star Wars scarf? Well, I think... It has to be one of your designs. Why? I, Why would you queue one of my designs? I'm not. Look, I'm trying I to have help not you or anything. deliberately <laughs> queued, queued anything. anything. How many times <laughs> do I have to tell you? I didn't even know you whereas, could queue things on Ravelry. Whereas I've got about a million things in my queue that really I will never get around to knitting. I don't know why they're all in there, quite honestly. I mean, it could Whenever be a... I think something's really nice, I just queue it. I haven't queued anything. So... You should just favourite it and not queue it, really. So I've done it accidentally. No. And, you know, I spend more time playing around with links to your designs than anything else. So, you know, you would think, if I did know how to queue something... <laughs> well, it's not difficult. There's a little tab where you're onto a pattern and it says queue and you just hit it. See, someone might have sent me a link to the Star Wars mm, scarf. That's true. I don't even know what Star Wars scarf it is. I mean, I think I can think of the Star Wars scarf it might be. So that, you know, that's... Instinctively, I thought I'd, I'd accidentally done it on one of your designs. That was what I thought. When you mm. said, before you give me any answers, I thought it's going to be one of your designs. But, you know, thinking it through, people do send me lots of things, you know, that look really cool. Um, and it may be that this one time... So I'll go D, the Star Wars scarf. You're going for Star Wars scarf? Yes. Is it correct? Have you all been looking to see if that's the one item that he's got queued? Okay. Is it correct? Yes, he is! Yay! You've got 
Star Wars scarf cube. I don't yes, think we've I just established that, Kay. I think it is double knit. I don't, it, it's certainly colour work. I don't know if it's double knit, but I yeah. think it might be. Go okay, on. question nine. Yes. When hand dyeing yarn, yes. you require a substance to fix the dye to the yarn. Yes. What is the name given to this fixing agent? Do you want me to no, no, question no, again? No, 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 no. Oh, you think you know? No. Oh, right. <laughs> I was just thinking. Go on, and I, I don't mean the actual chemical substance. I mean the name that is given to that substance. There's a kind of overall term, overall term, overall word that's used. <laughs> if you don't add, if you're not aware, if you, you know, you've got your dye and you've got your wool, but unless you use this additional substance, the dye will generally wash out of the wool. It'll leave a, a slight stain, but it won't fix to the yarn unless you add this substance. What is the name given to the fixing agent? I have said this word several times to you, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, I know, I'll know it when you say it, so I'll give me the answer. Okay. Is it A, a pigment? No. B, a mordant? C, a softener? Or D, a neutraliser? I, don't, I, can't, I can't recall you saying neutraliser to me. <laughs> it would make me think of Edward Woodward. <laughs> it's a neutraliser. <sighs> so I'm going to go B, mordant. B. Mordant. Is it correct? All of you hand eyes out there are shouting at the screen right now that he is correct. Oh, wow. Thank goodness he's mordant. That's the term that's used for vinegar, citric acid. Right. If you're a natural dyer, it could be alum or iron or any of the other things right. that are used. Right. It's mordant. Okay. Well done. Question 10. Final question. This pattern was released in September 2013 and currently has 5,780 projects on Ravelry. The item is knit using worsted weight yarn. Clearly you're going to need to see the photo. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the answers. Show me the picture woman. <laughs> understand these picture things then at all. There's a picture and a description. Right, so I then, show you, right, I've got yeah. it. It's my age. There you go. I have not a clue what they are. <sighs> not a clue. You all know, don't you, what this pattern's called? Are they socks? We well, can't say. Are they socks? Yeah. What are they if they're not socks? I didn't, it, knitted slippers. <laughs> <laughs> they're socks, but they're knitting worsted weights, so they're right. chunky, thick, you know, they're thick socks. I shall need the answers. Okay. Is it spelt, barley, wheat, or rye? Shall I give you another clue? Why? Because it would help. I nearly put this on the question and thought then I'd be giving it away, but I, think, I don't think I will now if I ask you if I add it on. Okay. The designer of this pattern is Tin Can Knits. Well, I, as soon as you said barley, I thought Tin Can Knits. So is it spelt? And, and actually, actually, barley. W what you've just done is sort of fair dues because uh, on this question, on your round, I gave you the option right. of telling me who the designer was for an extra oh, point. Oh, right, okay. Um, so is it spelt, barley, wheat or rye? Barley. Final answer? Yeah. Is it correct? I think barley might be a jumper. I believe barley is actually a hat. Right. That's why I know it. They are the rye socks. I'm sorry, I've never heard of them. Oh. Well, almost, almost 6,000 people have. Never heard of them. I'm really sorry, Tin Can it's is useless. So, I currently have four out of ten but I have the opportunity to get two more, which does put me within striking distance because Kay only got nine only. That's a giant of a score. So let's go to the question about the spinning wheel. Yeah. So let's remind the audience what the, sp the, the, the question was. So do you... The first spinning wheels were used between 500 and 1000 AD. Which country did they originate in? And the potential answers were? Iraq, India, China, Italy. I'm going India. 
India, final yes. answer. Yes. Is it correct? Yes. Yes! Yes! India! Five. So I've got five. Yes. That's five. 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 Come on. Okay. Well done. Well done. And now. Did we... the audience. Oh, they did. Oh, brilliant. They did. And We've had to give in on Nathan. So, unfortunately, but, but that's the point. Of text a friend. Mm -hmm. You and if you remember, I said one might be at work, the other one might be in bed. And I know we should go with the one at work because she probably yeah. would have had the opportunity to look at her phone. Yeah. So I've learnt next time they'll be my text a friend. I'm gonna have to get remind us the question. The basket weave stitch is so called because of its resemblance to wicker baskets. How is the stitch pattern produced? Is it produced by cables, lace, slip stitches? or a combination of knits and pearls? Cables. Is cables your final answer? Yes. Is he right? No, sadly, he's wrong. What is it? It's kn just knits and pearls. Right. It's just like a checkerboard effect. Oh, it, boring. It looks like the knits are going Well, I'm going to invent a new pearls. way of doing basket <laughs> weave where I use cables, and it actually creates proper sten. In fact, I'm going to stick flowers in the baskets too. You could, you could, you could, you could have lace oh, flowers in the top. You could have like a cable basket and a lace flower in the top. So I have five out of ten. Five out of ten. And only four behind. Only four behind. Oh yeah. yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. That is more than achievable with the, the usage of doubles. Yeah. Yes, I need to research like crazy before the next round. But 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 hold on a minute. We need to make sure. Yeah. Well, for the audience at home. They need to see how many knitted oh, items right, I okay. have on. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So, so one, one, two, three. three. Look at your hair. <laughs> four. Oh, dear. Five. You're down to take that off, aren't you? That's five. Yeah, and I do have two pairs of socks on, thank goodness. And then uh, six. six. There are two, trust me. Seven. Oh, yes. So we are tied. On oh, did I have seven on as You well? have seven as well. Oh, oh my goodness! It's the theme tune! So we know when it's the end of the quiz, near that we checked on oh my garments and I have seven on because we hit this in. Blue shadows on the train. I scored the grand shocking total of five. K scored nine, so I'm four behind. It still gives me ample opportunity with another rain to come, not next episode, but the episode after, because next episode, it's K all the way. Remember, you have an opportunity at home to win by identifying either this scene that started the show, or this scene that ended the show. And you know where to go, just follow the link in the show notes below, and go and enter to win a lovely skein of Bakery Bear's hand dyed yarn. So that is it. Thank you for watching another episode of Knit or Forfeit. We will see you, yes, we will see you in two weeks for more. And there's only one thing left for me to say. Are you ready to knit or forfeit? Not so much of a woohoo. Woohoo. Aww. Look. I, w I think, did I make the questions too hard? Will, I... will you be quiet about that? It, no. Right. Did you score well on it? Well, it doesn't matter how they scored. I know, but I'm With just... the greatest of respect, of course. Maybe somebody out there scored 10. I'm sure there will have been people out there <sighs> scored 10, but it's not about that, it's about what I scored. I know. And I scored five. Mm. But that's fine, because it's only four. I'm only four away. I'm telling you, I can win this because I didn't... I could totally fluff the next round. Yeah, but don't do that. I'm not going to do it on purpose. No, you're not. I'm just saying I could. Look, it's really important, like the first round, you know, that you did, yeah. that you cane it as hard as you can. Well, I will. I'm not going to... If I'm you know all the answers, I'm if you know all the answers, you go for it. You score as highly as you physically I will. can. I will. That's how I brought Briny up and it's how I brought Kay up. You brought me up. I'm older than you. I realise that. I'm trying to make you feel young. Oh, right. I'll have a hard job on that. Like I said, come back next time because, you know, it's only... It's only really in episode 114 where we're going to know what's going on because I'm going to research like crazy now. I've got time. I have ample time. Mm. Look, I'm coming up with another 10 questions. So in the process of coming up with those 10 questions, I can schedule in some research time. I'm really frustrated that I didn't get the sheep. Because I overthought well, it. He did it, yeah. I was just hoping that you would recognise the countryside. And that was my sort of... I overthought the sheep, most definitely. 
And also, really, the basket weave was overthought. Yeah. Because, you know, I stand by what I said. You know, basket weave could be the most amazing looking thing in the history of the world. I think you can do a weaving effect with cables, actually. You are right, you can do that, definitely. But it's not basket weave. But basket no, weave is it, done with knits and it's pearls. It's just done with knits and pearls, generally, yeah. So, it, again, slightly overthought, because, mm-hmm. you know, if you think about it, what's the easiest and simplest way to create mm-hmm. a basket weave stitch? Well, it would be with knits and pearls. It's obvious. Mm. And really, it was standing out like a sore thumb mm. because everything else was like a specific technique. Next time, we'll find out how Kay finishes off her round and then it's down to me to absolutely whoop Kay in episode 114. I don't mind if you do. Oh, stop it. I need... <laughs> we need the competitiveness. Look. Well, we definitely have that. Yes. I'm not going to let you win. Good. But I'll be happy for you if you win. Well, that's just lovely. It's time for the endy bits. Endy bits? Yes. Oh, we've got loads. First quick thing I need to say is the next issue of Knitability will be out on Monday, so don't miss that. Monday? Yes. Right. We have the winner for the Philosopher's Cowl knit-along. That's ended now. We had 37 entries, which was fantastic. And... I'm going to draw for a winner live because we own I know we never do this because it's a bit of a faff and we usually have 25,000 prizes. And it all goes wrong. Yeah. But we've only got one prize this time. So I thought right let's let's risk doing it live. So this is the prize. We've got a skein of the fantabulous Piggy yarns. Her Lux sock in the nine and three quarters is a self-striping yarn that I've knit socks in that you will have seen before. And then we're also throwing in a little Harry Potter Fantastic Beasts Lego figure mystery. I can't wait to see what I it know, is. I know, I want to see what that is. So whoever wins it, you must show us what, what's inside. So that's the prize. So now I'm going to do random number from 2 to 37. Because obviously number 1 was me. While well, she's random numbering, remember the climb of Remand and Kel continues. I'm part way through tallying up exactly where the climbers are and where the runners are. But everyone is doing an exceptional job. And just remember when we're finished, the people who are involved in the, the climbers and the runners. That sounds like people are physically climbing. What I meant to say was the knitters and the runners. Knitters, if you fill your rucksack, some of the prizes are absolutely exceptional. Okay. Um, so, are you ready to do your random yes. number? Excellent. Okay. The tension's mounting. I've got it. Who's going to win? 2 to 37, and we have got number 4. It's an early number. So, I'll hold up my screen. Hopefully, you can see it. It's just over in that tiny box like they do. But it's number 4. So, find out who the fourth person so was. So, I've now got to go on to Ravelry. And, and we will find out who number four is. I haven't looked, so I have no clue. I'm signing into Ravelry. I now have to touch my thumb on the blooming thing. Cause you can now see why we don't do this live. Yeah. I'm decreeing, Kay, we're never doing this live again. Right, that's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, it's lovely. Number four was a beautiful cowl knit by No Knit Sherlock. Woohoo! Susan, you've won that skein of yarn. And there's Susan's beautiful philosopher's cowl. So, Susan, how fantastic. I'm so thrilled. Yee! Susan's won that yarn. Can you send me a message, just a Ravelry message with your address? And I'll get that sent out to you. So I hope, I hope you enjoyed that live drawing, folks, because it's never happening again. <laughs> and congratulations, Susan. Susan, let us know what's inside the grab bag, the little mystery bag. That'd be so cool. We've got a new knit along going along. It started on the 1st of November. It's our Christingle Mingle knit along. There is now a chatter thread and there's an FO thread open in the group. This will run until the end of December and it's just an opportunity to knit all of your Christmas, Christmas gifts, Christmas knitting, whatever it is you're doing for Christmas. And these should be hashtagged on Instagram, Chris Dingle Mingle. Chris Dingle Mingle. And additional points will be awarded for people who photograph their knitted items with things that rhyme with mingle. So, so it could be a Pringle. Could be a Pringle. It jumper could, or crisp. It could be a bell that jingles. It could be shingle off a beach. It could be shingle. 
Uh, well, I think that probably has exhausted the things <laughs> that rhyme with mingle. And we've got some prizes already, so I thought I'd just quickly show you what they are. We'll probably be getting more, but this is as we stand at the moment. So with each of the prizes, I'm going to be popping in a copy of Heather's shawl pattern. You know, I said to you before, she'd sent us some laminated copies. So I will... Wipe be... clean. I wipe clean, yes. You can knit while you're... Eating. Eating your soup. Um, so yeah, her stash buster shawl, I'll be popping in a copy of the pattern with each of the prizes. So thank you for that, Heather. Think while you're eating your soup. <laughs> what are the fruits that you have to stand over a sink when you're eating? Peaches. Yeah, peach. Yeah, so you could yeah. you could knit whilst eating a peach. Not a good idea. And you would better go on your yarn, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's why it's funny, Kay. <laughs> okay. So also, we've got a skein of yarn. This came from Heather as well. She sent me a couple of skeins of this, one for me and one for a prize. So this is the one I'm going to use for a prize, and it's from Art Yarns. I've never used this before, but it's beautiful yarn. It's a merino cashmere blend, 80-20, cashmere, 20%. This colour is CC5. Excellent, well done on the naming of this colourway. But it's this gorgeous purple with beautiful blues and oranges and pinks in there. So that's one of the prizes. There's also some of my yarn. I kept back- There isn't. There is. Well. I kept back one of these bundles. It was in my last update. I did these mini skein bundles that I called And To All A Good Night. Do you know in, it was, it was based on, Am I just preaching to the converted? No, no, it's Will just, everybody it's know what that means? That oh, reference? no, no, some people might not. I mean, I guess um, most people would know. It was in the Santa Claus movie where he's delivered all his presents. It's That's... in the night before Christmas, Kay. Oh, well, I wasn't thinking of that. Well, it's... the reason why it's in the Santa Claus the it's because movie it's in is the because film. in the night before Christmas. The book. Yes. Right. At the end. And we did an episode all on the history of Christmas. Yeah. I think it's, it's it'll be around the 30s, I, I think. Right. And it's where we went to that house just down the road. Oh, it's yeah, really yeah, nice. Yeah. We explored the history of Christmas and we established the fact that that was the point, sort of Victorian period, where that book was written. Right. That's when okay. the, the sort of modern day approach to Christmas appeared. And that book finishes with, and to all and to a good all night. all a good night. So night well, before Christmas. it just made me think of the Santa Claus. <laughs> And what it was, we've got a skein of this kind of Santa red, Santa suit red, and then three minis in Santa's beard, a Christmas elf, and then this is Santa's kind of brass buckles yes, on his yes. shoes and on his belt. So I thought that was a really nice set. And it's all been dyed on sparkle, on silver sparkle. And what I did was... That's the ice. I put... Yeah, exactly. That's the snow. And then I put a very gentle black wash over all of the skeins because I kind of wanted it to have that sooty look. Yeah. Not sooty as in the puppet. No. Soot as in from a chimney, because obviously Santa... Oh, I love sooty. I love sooty. Sooty was cool. I love the fact how he just went, squeak. <laughs> so and, and, and the dog like had a, this lovely female voice. Oh, yeah. sooty. Sweep. Uh, Sweep. But then what was the other thing? Because there was a stupid dog, wasn't there, as well, that used to... What's that? No, Sweep was the dog. Sue! Sue! Sue, 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 Sue. was the one with the... Yeah. Because Sue always used to talk to Matthew Corbett, didn't she? Yeah. They'd have, like, intelligent yeah. conversations, and Sooty and Sweep <laughs> would be doing, like, crazy things. I love them. They were brilliant. <sighs> Bonkers. So, yeah, all of the yarn has had a gentle black wash to... You can see it more in the, the white here. You can see it's got these very gentle sort of tones on it to represent the soot in the chimney that will be there after Santa's been delivering all his parcels. So that's... After he's been milking the cows. <laughs> that was my going up and down the chimney action. Right. <laughs> so that's one of the prizes anyway. You didn't know anyway. that Santa had a field of Guernseys, did you? Oh, shush. He makes delicious ice cream. And then another, the last prize, last sort of yarn prize I've got as we stand at the moment is a skein of Cascade Heritage Prints. And I've, I ordered some of this recently because I've been knitting with it and really liked it. And I just thought it might be nice to use one as a prize because it's a yarn that maybe not everyone has used. So I thought that might be fun. So it's this one, which I thought with the gold and the blue and the cream was kind of a little bit festive. So there's a skein of Cascade Heritage as well. 
And we've also got some pattern donations. We've got one from Jen Sheelan and one from Natalie Sheldon that we mentioned before. So that's the prizes that we've got so far for that knit along. I know that I've got some more on the way. And then the last thing is I've just bought a couple of things. Is that okay? Yes, I thought you were going to show everyone your blouse. My blouse? Yes. She bought this lovely new blouse. I bought a new blouse. So I look like you're about to say, the last thing is I bought this lovely new blouse. She looks like a Greek goddess. Do you think? I, I, I do think I I've like, sat right here. I quite like this blouse. Excellent. And they did it in cream as well. I'm right. tempted to get it in cream. But I don't know if that might be a bit obvious, that cream. And I'm not sure if I have to wear a vest or Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. So, cream, bad idea. I've got a few skeins of yarn and the first one I bought, I saw this dyer. Actually, I saw somebody who'd knit a pair of socks from this dyer. Michelle, was it you? I think it might have been Michelle Jakes. I'm not sure. If it wasn't you, I'm really sorry. But one of my friends on Instagram had knit a pair of socks using this dyer's yarn. It wasn't this colour, but it's self-striping. And I thought, oh, I'll go and have a look at that. She was very complimentary about it, having knit some socks in it. And then I discovered that she's actually based in Sheffield. I had to order a skein, because that's my hometown, in case you didn't know. And she's called the Yarn Badger. So this is the yarn I ordered. This one is self-striping. It's a 10 striper. 10 striper. I can't get my head around it. And it's called Festival. And it's in a sparkle merino nylon. And the colours are just lovely, aren't they just beautiful? So 10 striper, I think he's, uh, I'm in awe of people who dye self-striping yarns. I really am, because I've said this before, I think it's just fantastic. So I can't wait to start those. I think it's just going to be such a lovely pair of socks. So thank you, Yarn Badger. And she sent me some Yorkshire tea. Now you're talking. I'm going to have that later. Thank you so much for that. I saw this yarn on an Instagram is just a terrible place. <laughs> Isn't it? In so many ways. I mean, as far as like enabling goes, I saw this and I'm like, oh, of course I can't find it in this country. It's Cascade again and it's Heritage, but it's called Wave. I've never heard of this, but it was it was on um, the feed for Wet Coast Wools and they're based in Canada. I follow them on Instagram. Posted a picture of this. Look at that. It looks like hand spun. Hand spun. <laughs> I've lost the ability to speak. Uh, what? Well, I, I'm not certain when you had the ability to speak. So it's this beautiful hand spun looking yarn that I'm presuming knits up in sort of a gradient way. The folk, I mean, look, that's how it knits up. Oh, it's what? Complete. what? Yes. It's beautiful. Look at the picture. It's beautiful. Cascade. You've really let me down on this. I mean, that is just beyond dreadful. That, what is that? That's how it knits up, apparently. Oh, I'll have two. That's a photo fail. I'm sorry. It made me laugh. It doesn't bother me. It made me laugh, but come on. <laughs> but I'm presuming it, it knits up in like a, a Zauber ball well, it shows kind you there, of there. It. <laughs> It's just going to look exactly like that picture there absolutely beautiful and this is the holidays wave holidays so it's based obviously on the holidays color <laughs> i'm saying it like that because it's days with a z okay sorry look yes i see it's I days see. with a z yes. not holidays holidays no that sound <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i got this from wet coast walls i looked online no, listen to me. I'm listening. <laughs> I did a Google search and you can get Cascade Heritage Wave. Go <laughs> <laughs> on. You can get this yarn in this country, but they didn't have this colourway. I think Love Knitting stocked it, but they didn't have this colourway. So I thought, right, I'm going to look at wet, wet Coast Walls because even though they're based in Canada, this skein was 19 Canadian dollars or 18.99. So I knew with the conversion rate that that would fall underneath the customs duty level. So I knew I wouldn't have to pay customs on it. And the shipping was, a, was not bad at all. I think it was about 10 Canadian dollars, something like that. So I ordered it from them, came in 
brilliant, you know, brilliantly quick, really, to say it came from Canada and didn't pay customs on it. So win-win all round. And I think that'll be a fun knit. The last thing, you'll be so glad to know that yes. this is the last thing yes. because we're really now... It's like I've been to Ikea again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling now with the whole speak, speaking thing, obviously. I placed an order with Kelly Lay. Lovely Lay family... Fam <laughs> Right. Can people not have such complicated words? Please? Which be, which of those is complicated? Lay family yarn. None of it. <laughs> but obviously, it's too complicated for me right now. Lovely Kelly was having an update. I decided to grab three skeins of yarn from her. I've got old romance. Kelly is brilliant at doing this kind of speckled yarn. I've used it a couple of times for designs and it's it's fantastic because it shows off a lot of different stitch patterns really, really well without disguising it. And it, it really enhances the design, I think, just having this kind of speckly on a neutral. So that's Old Romance. This is the Cornish Way. I love this one. It's gorgeous, peachy, pinky with like a mossy sort of green in there. It's gorgeous. So I've got that one as well. Lovely. And then the last one is a Christmas colourway. And this is called Mrs. Claus's Raspberry Prosecco. Because why not at Christmas? And look at that. Sparkle, this one. Gorgeous. So Kelly, thank you so much. And she's started doing some self-striping. She's been doing self-striping for a little bit, but she posted a picture the other day of some Christmas self-striping that she's putting up soon in the shop, I think. They look fantastic. So yay, Kelly, love those. Thank finished. you so much. I finished, I don't need to talk anymore. Wonderful. Folks, thank you so much for watching. Yes, what a show it's been. Samantha will be finished next time. I'm now feeling the pressure. Yeah. Next time, Kay will be back with another of her contestant rounds of Knit or Forfeit. It's the key moment. We shall find out what her final uh, total will be. I will be dialing up the questions and you can also do the same. Let's play this oh, properly. Right, okay. I, well, no, 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 no. I'll just do exactly the same as what I did before. Well, I thought they were hard. I think I was just lucky with okay. the questions. Okay. No, it's called skill. Well, I think it's not, but anyway. Well, it is. So we'll be back in two weeks with more of that. So much in between now and then, as I say, Brand new knitability out on Monday, and there's tutorials and all sorts going on as usual. So, thank you so much for watching. There's only one thing left for me to say, and that's goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Enthusiasm's not quitting. They'll take you to fabulous places of which they're in a castle watching the bakery bears. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery bears. What's on your shelf or